Meet Nancy, a 63-year-old woman who decided to improve her diet. She had a habit of snacking on chips in the evening, so she decided to swap out the chips for a healthier option. But little did she know that her choice of snack would cause her kidneys to start shutting down and affect the rest of her life. Weeks went by and Nancy started feeling more and more exhausted. No matter how many cups of coffee she had, she just felt like she was dragging herself through the day. So she went to her doctor who ordered some blood work. When Nancy looked up her lab results, she was surprised to see that her kidney function was highlighted in red and labeled as abnormal. That's weird. Just eight months ago, her lab work was completely normal. The next day, Nancy got a call from her doctor's office asking her to repeat the blood work. Hopefully it was just a lab error. Nope. The lab results came back showing the same thing. Nancy's kidneys were filtering at a rate of only 25% of a normal kidney. At this rate, it won't be long until her kidneys aren't working at all. So the big question is, what's causing this kidney damage? And can it be reversed? Okay, so when I'm approaching a patient with new kidney disease, I always think about three main categories of possible causes. First, is there enough blood getting pumped to the kidney? In other words, is the person dehydrated or do they have a problem with their heart or their liver? Second, is there a problem with the kidney itself? Now, this is a really long list. Everything from high blood pressure to cancer or lupus. And third, is something blocking the urine from coming out of the kidney? causing a backlog of pressure. In men, we often think about the prostate, but that's not an issue for Nancy. So now the hunt is on to figure out which of these conditions is affecting Nancy's kidney function. She went to see a kidney specialist who listened to her story and reviewed all the investigations that had been done so far. There were no signs of dehydration, heart or liver disease, and an ultrasound of the abdomen was normal with no signs of a blockage. So it looks more like a problem with the kidney itself. But here's what's odd. Usually when the issue is inside the kidney itself, you find clues within the urine sample, like high protein levels because the kidney filtration system is damaged or misshapen red blood cells because of an inflamed kidney. But surprisingly, Nancy's urine was pristine with no blood and no protein. As an aside, there are a lot of things that you can learn about your health just by looking at your urine. So if you wanna learn more about practical things to watch out for, then take a look at this video next. Nancy's doctor ordered more tests. They looked for narrowing of her blood vessels, autoimmune diseases. She even had a bone marrow biopsy to rule out cancer and everything came back normal. Three months went by and her kidney function continued to deteriorate. Now her kidneys were only functioning at 20% of normal capacity. Things were getting dire. With no time to waste, Nancy had a kidney biopsy. This allowed her doctors to actually examine a tiny piece of her kidney under the microscope to try to find a clue. At first glance, it just looked like general kidney damage, nothing to really help with the diagnosis. But then they exposed the specimen to polarized light and this is what they saw. Notice how it looks like someone sprinkled glitter on the kidney? Well, those are actually calcium oxalate crystals. And that's what's damaging Nancy's kidneys. It's a condition called nephrocalcinosis. Nephro for kidney and calcinosis meaning calcium deposition. And for those of you who are thinking, isn't that the same as kidney stones? The answer is no. While kidney stones can be formed by calcium oxalate crystals, the difference lies in where the crystals form. Think of it like this. If crystals form inside the urine, it can form kidney stones. But if the crystals form inside the kidney itself, it can cause kidney damage without actually forming any stones. And the reason that stones form in some people and not in others seems to be related to the immune system. Okay, so now we know what's wrong with Nancy's kidneys, but we still have to figure out why her body is forming these calcium oxalate crystals. So Nancy met with a dietitian at the kidney clinic who asked her to go through what she typically eats for each meal. Oatmeal and coffee with milk for breakfast, an omelet on toast for lunch, and meat and potatoes for dinner. Pretty classic. What about snacks? Nancy confidently explained that she used to eat lots of chips and popcorn for snacks, but now she had switched to a healthier option. She was eating cashews, about one kilogram of cashews per week. Now, don't get me wrong, one kilogram of cashews a week is a lot. It's definitely an expensive snack, but it just doesn't strike me as an absurdly large amount that would cause two organs to fail. So could there be something else going on? Nancy's dietitian did a few calculations which revealed two things. Nancy's diet was high in oxalates and very low in calcium. And further testing confirmed it. Her urine was full of oxalates, 
and very low in calcium. That's the worst combination, and it's the key to this entire case. And to understand why, we need to talk about oxalates. So first, what are they? So oxalates are natural compounds that are found in so much of our foods fruits, vegetables, grains, and nuts. The strange thing is that they don't seem to provide us with any nutritional benefits, and they can cause issues, which is why they're often called anti-nutrients. And that's usually not an issue, because only about 10% of the oxalates in your food actually get absorbed into your body. That is, as long as you're eating enough calcium. That's because calcium binds to oxalate, which prevents it from getting absorbed, and then it just passes through your system without causing any issues. Don't you love when the pieces of the puzzle start coming together? So not only was she eating a diet high in oxalates, mainly because of her cashews, but she was also absorbing so much of it because she was lacking calcium. And oxalates aren't just bad for the kidneys. Over time, when they build up, they can deposit in areas like the brain and the nerves. So what happened to Nancy? Well, she immediately stopped eating cashews and started tracking her oxalate intake. She soon learned that almonds actually have way more oxalate in them than cashews, so it's a good thing she didn't choose those to snack on. Nancy also increased her water intake to stay well hydrated. And finally, she added a calcium supplement to her meals as an oxalate binder. So now if you're examining your own diet, make sure that you're getting around 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams of calcium per day, depending on your age and gender. Ideally, it's best to get it through your diet, things like dairy products, broccoli, or fortified beverages. But if you're allergic to dairy products like me, or you choose not to eat them, then you may need to take a calcium supplement to make sure you're getting your daily requirements. And if you're not sure, then chat with your healthcare provider. Okay, back to Nancy. So after just two months of making these changes, her oxalate levels completely normalized, and her kidney function significantly improved. Unfortunately, her kidney function never completely normalized, so Nancy's left with mild chronic kidney disease for the rest of her life. So the moral of the story is everything in moderation, because even too much of a healthy snack can be dangerous. Just promise me that you're not gonna leave this video thinking that you need to cut out all high oxalate foods from your diet. You really only need to focus on limiting them if you have a medical condition where it's necessary, like Nancy. Instead, focus on eating a balanced diet with enough calcium and plenty of water to prevent kidney stones. Fruits, vegetables, nuts, and grains are healthy. They're packed with vitamins, minerals, fiber that you need. So don't write them off just because they've got some oxalates in them. And if you're still not convinced, then watch this video next, where a woman cut out an important part of her diet and something pretty dramatic happened. This video was based on an article published in the Canadian Medical Association Journal. So if you wanna learn more, I'll leave a link in the description. Be sure to subscribe, and that way, I'll see you in the next video. So, bye for now.